Hey guys, it's Chris from Deb Coffee, and in this episode, we're going to be doing image upload with Cloudinary on the client side. Let's get started. Okay, so Cloudinary in 30 seconds. It's a cloud-based product where we can upload our images and videos and have them hosted as well, meaning that we don't have to do any setup with the CDN or anything like that. It just automatically works. Uh, it's extremely, extremely useful for transforming images. For instance, if I wanted to save a thumbnail and I wanted to save my full size, size image, or if I wanted to you know, turn the image into a circle or crop it a little bit, I can go ahead and do that, add filters. We can set all this up with the transform feature that Cloudinary has. There's a lot of other features I wanna cover, but we're just gonna be doing image upload. Hopefully that covered it a little bit. So to get started guys, go ahead and hit sign up for free. Um, I already signed up, so I'm not going to do this step. And then what I'm going to do is I already have this hosted on GitHub. So go ahead and download it or git clone it. Uh, and this is just a basic basic starting point. All it is is an express server that's just serving up a static HTML page. So I already have it cloned and I have it open right here. And I'm going to go ahead and start the server by doing npm start. And you guys probably need to do an npm install to get the packages in there. And then the npm start. And it looks like we're on localhost 1337. So I got that right there. What we have right here is a very, very, very just HTML right here. We have a image of Bill Murray. And then we have a select image where if you click on it, it will uh, pop up some a dank meme folder with a ton of dank memes. Now the goal of this is for us to click on one of these and for it to actually upload. Um, should be very, very simple. Well, if we go over here and look over at our HTML, we have two elements that we want to, to basically uh, get, which is this image right here with the ID of image preview, and then this image upload, okay? And that has the idea of uh, file upload. Let's go ahead, and if you go over to our public, and then go to scripts, and then app.js, right there, we'll have a blank at a blank JavaScript file that we can work with. Now I'm loading it down here and you'll notice that I'm also loading a different JavaScript library called Axios. We're gonna use this for our HTTP um, methods that we're gonna be doing to, to send the file and to, to upload it. Uh, I didn't wanna use jQuery because I feel like that would have been a little bit overkill. Uh, so let's just do it the vanilla JavaScript way. We're gonna make a variable and we're gonna need that image preview, okay? document dot get element by ID and it's called image dash preview is what the name of that element is and then we're gonna get the file upload which is that input with the type of file and then we're gonna get it by ID and that's called file upload so now we have our two basic variables what we want to do now is add an event listener to our file upload now um, the event we're going to be wanting to listen to is the change event. Now, if somebody picks a file or changes it from a file that's already selected, it will fire off this event. Now, let's go ahead and test that. So, file upload dot uh, add event listener. This is good old old script or old school JavaScript, no framework involved. And then put in the string change, so the event, and then a callback function. And this callback function will have a event object in there. So let's just go ahead and console.log the event object, okay? And this should be working. All we have to do is just refresh our HTML page. Make sure you refresh it because it's not auto refreshing. Open up our console. We'll click select an image and then pick one of these dank memes or whatever image you guys got there. And we'll see we have this uh, event object. Now if we scroll down, we'll see that it has a property of target, which is the actual element. And on target, if you scroll down just a little bit further, you'll see that we have this file property, which has, which is an array, or it's actually a file list um, constructor. And then we have only one thing inside the file list, which is our one file. And we'll see there we have our name, we have the size, we have the type of image it is, when it was modified. That's exactly what we need. So we're going to have to dig down in there and get that variable. Let's go ahead, make a var called file, do event.target.files. 
and then get the only thing in there, which will be at the index of zero. Okay, now that we have this, uh, now that we have our file variable, what we wanna do now, let's just console.log it, just to see exactly that we have that and it's working. So just select another image and we have this file object, perfect. What we're gonna wanna do is send that to Cloudinary. We don't have anything set up on the Cloudinary side and I did that on purpose because I wanted you guys to see where, what point we have to get to. Okay, so if we go over here and I'm already inside of my dashboard, we'll see that there's this account details. Now you shouldn't be sharing any of these account details with anyone. I'm going to because I'm gonna delete this account or change them right after this video. So go ahead and click more and you'll see here right at the bottom is API base URL, okay? We're gonna to wanna to copy that. And at the top over here, we're going to make a variable, or actually a constant rather, called cloud inary underscore URL. And set it equal to that URL we just got, but at the end, put dash or slash upload, okay? And now step number two is, if we want to do this client site upload, uh, you gotta understand that we're, all this is not gonna be private and we have to allow access for uh, clients to be doing this because typically you do it through the server side. Now to do this, it's gonna definitely make your app, uh, there's gonna be some security loopholes with this because anybody pretty much anywhere can use this URL to upload. So keep that in mind. Uh, there's certain use cases where, where you would do this, but just keep in mind your app's gonna be insecure. And people can see the URL if they just do a simple view source. So go to settings, then click on upload. And down here you'll see this upload presets. Click on enable unsigned unloading. Okay, and now we're gonna click save. Now down here you basically got a, uh, an upload presets uh, variable. Just go ahead and save this. And now we're gonna make another variable called cloudinary upload preset. Okay, and that's just a string right there, just paste it. And now we're pretty much ready to go. All we have to do is just send our file over. Now we, we have access to Axios. And let me show you exactly what that looks like. That should be on the global scope. So Axios right there is the function. We know that we have that loaded. And let me go ahead and look up Axios for you guys. HTTP. It's a very, very simple promise-based HTTP client for the browser and node. I use this all the time if you don't wanna use the, the one that JavaScript has implemented and you don't wanna use jQuery or, or some, other, some other one. This is, is really, really useful. All, this, all you're gonna do is type in Axios and then pass in an object of uh, different config, configurations. So the URL will be cloudinary, cloudinary URL. Then the method we're gonna be doing is a post. Okay, and then we're gonna to wanna to pass the data. Now, this is something that's kind of important. We don't wanna send JSON data. We don't wanna just send the file like this because the endpoint, this endpoint right here is not looking for JSON. It's looking for a, a form content header. Now, we gotta set the content type in order for this request to send that type of data. Luckily, Axios has access to this headers property, and we can go ahead and set our content type. So it has to be typed exactly like this. And it is x-www-form-url encoded. encoded. All right, just keep that in mind. We're setting the content, so, or it's actually application slash that. Now, if I want to send JSON, I would do it like this but we're gonna send the, the um, form data. Okay, so now we can pass in our data object. Now, even more so, we're not gonna do this again. We're not gonna pass this object. We need to, to utilize something that's baked into JavaScript, which is the form data constructor. Like, like, let me show you where this is. So if I just type in form data and hit enter, that is a constructor. I can see that right there. That is a global variable that I have access to that JavaScript gives you. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a new variable called form 
data and set it to a new instance of form data. Okay. Just keep in mind, this is going, if I were to do a submit, like let's say I had a uh, form element and I submitted that, this is what that data kind of looks like. We're just doing it through JavaScript and encoding it uh, to be form data. We're going to do form data dot append, then the key and value. So the key here would be file and the value is the file object itself. Okay. Then we do form data dot append. And now this is where we pass up in our upload preset. So type in upload underscore preset. Now this is very important that you do this exactly the same. Don't do this camel case or Pascal case or anything like that. Do it upload underscore preset because Cloudinary is going to be looking for this. If you do not have this, it'll say, Hey, you're unauthorized. You're not allowed to be using this because you don't have an unsigned variable. And now we pass in our Cloudinary upload preset. You guys didn't have to necessarily make these variables. I like doing this. So if it ever changes and I have a direct place, where I, I'm looking at it, let's say we had like 10 different file uploads. Th if this, you only change this in one place. Whereas I could ob obviously just copy and paste this right here and it would be the same thing, but that's why I like using constants for variables like this. Okay, so now all we have to do, get rid of this object and just do data colon and then pass in your form data, okay? Now from here, like we said, Axios is a promise based library. So we're going to have a then callback, which has a function and then a catch. This will have a response and this will have an error. So if there's an error, it will go into this catch. So let's just do console.log error if there's an error. And then we'll just console.log the response if it succeeds. Okay, that was a lot of code and we have not tested it yet. Let me just walk you through mentally what we just did here. We created an event listener that's waiting for a change. And if it does change, it, we define these variables. We create our form data with our file in our upload preset. Then we do a request using Axios to our URL. We set the content type to uh, form URL encoded. Then we pass the form data and we should expect this to actually upload. Now let's try it. I'll select the image, fingers crossed. Let's upload uh, one of these, yeah, dank meme 420, that's what I'm gonna do. And we'll see that we get a 200 status. Now this is, this is really good. And if we go over here and go to our data, we'll see there that it, it passed back this, this giant object with the different bytes when it was created at, the format, the height, um, the secure URL, this is what's really important. This is where it's actually uploaded. So if I actually go and copy and paste this, we'll see that our image is actually uploaded. Now that's awesome. You'll see other information here. And let's go to our media library. We'll wait for this to load there. And we'll see, yes, that that did indeed load and we did get our picture. What we want to do now is we probably want to indicate to the user that, Hey, your image is uploaded or, you know, even change the preview picture because we didn't get any visual feedback other than the console. Well, let's do our image preview. So we're going to, that image preview variable we have up here, we're going to change the source of it to the res.data, res.data.secure URL. Secure underscore URL. Okay. So now let's refresh. We hit select image and let's do dank fedora dot gif. And this will take a little bit to upload. And hopefully it uploads here in a second. There we go. So we'll see that our gif, it even did a gif, any image type, it did get uploaded and we have a visual display. Now, this video was very, very fast paced. I understand that, but understand what we accomplished. We were able to, from our client, do simple image upload and get it working inside of our cloud and host it to where we can actually see it. Now in more practical examples, we would probably utilize a server. So not everybody could see our uh, upload URL and, and be able to do requests and, and have our 
cloud be insecure. But we'll cover that in another video, as well as something else that you guys probably would want is a uh, progress bar. Having probably a progress bar indicating, okay, this is how far, you saw how long that GIF took to, to upload. Uh, we need to let our user know that it is uploading and how long it's going to be. Well, guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and the next videos will be coming out shortly, as well as the other videos that I'm doing. But until next time, I'm Chris Pena, and I like uh, sriracha a lot. It's pretty good. I have it with my chicken.